and gentlemen, it's that time again. It's Covenant Pro Wrestling up for 1.11. I'm James Randall, and we are live from Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to be an action-packed night for us here tonight. We've got Mac Daddy Furnace in action. We've got Jamie Clark in action. We've got Emma Barkley in action. Lauren Osborne in action, and that's only part of the fun. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving and a wonderful Black Friday. Uh, but now we are starting off with an uproar here. Covenant Pro Wrestling, Brad Winters returning against Jordan Chase. The No Limit Soldier was injured at Phoenix Rising in the Over the Top Rope Battle Royal. Jordan Chase was injured emotionally when he uh, when he lost to Seth Dallas several weeks ago in under two minutes. We have to wonder if the blueprint is trying to let us know or is going to try to let us know what the blueprint is all about here tonight. And it's not the blueprint for losing. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest is scheduled for one fall. And it has a time limit of 20 minutes. Introducing first. Making their way to the ring from Birmingham, Alabama. Weighing in at 240 pounds. He is the blueprint, Jordan Chase. Jordan Chase making his second appearance here in Covenant Pro Wrestling. As mentioned before, he lost in almost an embarrassing fashion to Seth Dallas a couple weeks ago. His wife, um, Deanna Chase, also lost embar embarrassingly to the boss woman, Hisano. So the Chases have a lot to prove here in Covenant Pro Wrestling in terms of whether they belong. And I do have to address a correction on my part as uh, last week, I referred to Deanna Chase as Deanna Jordan, thinking of King Jordan, AKA Jordan Chase. But I want to make sure you guys know that her name is Deanna Jordan. Regardless of what their names are, I imagine they want to make their name here. And it's going to have a, a lot of effort on their part in order to do that because it was some of the most embarrassing contests um, one-sided contest that we've ever seen. And now for his opponent, making their way to the ring from Granger, Wyoming, weighing in at 220 pounds, this is the No Limit Soldier, Brad Winter. Brad Winters making his return to Covenant Pro Wrestling after a very serious concussion had left him sidelined for several weeks. Um, he's apparently 100%, but that is yet to be seen here tonight. You know, concussions linger. And I, I just hope Brad Winters is up to the challenge of Jordan Chase. You know, I can poke fun at Jordan all I want, but the, the fact of the matter is Covenant Pro Wrestling has the best athletes on the face of the earth, so none of them can be taken lightly. And Brad Winters may be in trouble if he's not 100% here. Brad Winters locking up with Jordan Chase, sending him over to the corner. Bad situation, Jordan Chase knows it, an elbow to the face, and a tilt the world slam there. And a fairly decent kick combination. Jordan Chase already out of the gate, showing some spark that we didn't see the last time we saw him. But Brad Winters able to slow down the momentum just a bit, wrenching on that neck and now working over that arm. Brad Winters, we know that he is a submission specialist. He can, he can bend you in many ways. Uh, now showcasing that here. Directly a pinfall. But only a one count referee Leonard Seymour right on the money there, right in the middle of the action, on target. Thought he was going for a pinfall there, but able to go for a uh, Juji Katami, but actually has a trapped leg in there as well. That makes it much more difficult to gain the leverage to fight out of that. Great strategy by Brad Winters. A knee to the midsection and a kick to the, the back of the head by Jordan Chase. And I think, I think, don't quote me, we might be in deeper waters now than Jordan Chase was able to get with Seth Atlas before. And now a springboard, a springboard 450 splash it looked like. And Jordan Chase 
Jordan Chase able to show some of his submission prowess as well. But Brad Winters knows all the ways to get out of that, out of that hole. He's such a seasoned veteran when it comes to uh, submission wrestling and ground-based wrestling. It's going to take a lot more than that. Enormous suplex there by Brad Winters. A kick combination and a fist to the side of the head. Brad Winters gaining some momentum kick combination here and a knee strike switching it up at the last moment giving him an open opportunity to, to make his mark there. But a Gamagiri counter when he was grounded. Jordan Chase not wanting to stay grounded for long. Ripcord Lariat flipping, literally flipping Brad Winters around. And now we see the band Peter English finger hold here. Peter England finger hold, I should say. Assaulting that wrist, assaulting those carpals and metacarpals and all of that. Flipping senton splash. And Jordan Chase duplicating one of those again. Jordan Chase looking better than he ever has here in Covenant Pro Wrestling. But Brad Winters still has more in the tank. Jacking the jaw just a little bit of Jordan Chase. But a Russian leg sweep keeping control and clubbing blows. You know, he must have heard me talking mad shit on commentary and in the back because... He is just on a tear right now, a knee strike. The Brad Winters. Brad Winters, he's got the ring awareness, he's got the athleticism. But Jordan Chase finding ways to take him down. And the protect your neck. One, two. Jordan Chase hitting the protect your neck. Obviously, Brad Winters coming back from a very serious concussion. Can't take more of those. Went for a huge stomp, that blackout, but Brad Winters able to counter in a very, very impressive cutter. The quickness of Brad Winters. I can't, I can't even believe it. He looks to be 110% here. Brad Winters. Hammering away at the face and just a disrespectful slap to Jordan Chase. Looking to chop his opponent down with lefts and rights and strikes galore. German suplex release. And now we see the Kimura lock. We've seen Brad Winters put several opponents away from this, and if Jordan Chase knows what's good for him, he'll find a way to counter out of this, and yeah, he does possibly a kidney shot there. It's all legal in Covenant Pro. Pinfall Brad Winters, two. I think over time, Leonard Seymour is becoming Leonard C. Less. We see such violence and such um, nefarious maneuvers and basically desperation on the part of all these competitors that he has to turn a blind eye to a lot of this stuff that happened. Brad Winter is looking to keep his momentum up, but Jordan Chase countering. I'm trying to send Brad against the ropes. He's able to do it. Huge haymaker. And now wrapping, wrapping Brad Winters into the ropes. And just taking advantage with several knee strikes. And now Brad freshly uh, arrived back from his concussion hiatus. Maybe about to gain another concussion. Because Jordan Chase is showing us something that we didn't see before. Some spark that wasn't there. And sending Brad Winters into the steel steps. You know, Jordan Chase is tight. They say game over. And it seems like he's not shy about using the game shark here to take an easy advantage. You know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a cheeky move there.
Very quick leg combination there by Jordan Chase and now working on the leg of Brad Winters. I never thought I would say it in this matchup. I thought this one was a sure bet for Winters, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to win this one. Jordan Chase has been uh, completely rabid. Uh, you know, it's been back and forth, but Jordan Chase showing an intensity that I really didn't expect from him, and I'm sure that the fans didn't expect from him. So if you're watching this at home, go on CovenantProWrestling.com and fill out the poll. Uh, did did Brad Winters bite off more than he could chew, or is Jordan Chase just going crazy right now? Both men jockeying for position. Jordan Chase went for a knee strike, but Brad Winters. So seasoned, able to counter out of it and counters out of that suplex attempt as well. You know, just a moment ago, I was wondering if Brad Winters was able to, going to be able to continue in this fight uh, because it was looking not to be in his corner, not to be in, you know, the ball in his court, so to speak. But now it's looking pretty even with that Yuranagi side slam. Tally that, tally that up on uh, Brad Winter's side with that exploder suplex. Now we've seen this before. The Basaiku knee, the M1A1, connects on target, pinfall, Leonard Seymour, one, two, but only a two count. Just a little tidbit about the Basaiku knee. My girlfriend thought it was the psycho me, so not all of us are made for commentary. And I say that just as a joke. I'm not that much of an asshole. But back to the action. A huge knee strike there. Jordan Chase trying to gain momentum and keep it. But Brad Winters going up top. What's he going to do? An elbow drop perhaps? No. Motioning and a huge crossbody lays into the pin there. Two count, but only a two. Jordan Chase still in this, but the M1A1. Brad Winters got the target lock. Can he hit it? And he does, and bust him open for good measure. Jordan Chase, two, but able to kick out of that one. Jordan Chase is a completely different man here today. And as we see it, he's still counting, you know, he's still fighting back. You can't count him out. Now he's got Brad in the corner. Not a good situation. Fortunately for Brad, he's able to fight out, went for a knee. And a neck breaker sending Jordan Chase down to the canvas. Not sure what Jordan Chase went went there for that or went for for there or whatever. Pinfall. Only a two count. Now we see Brad Winters working away on the arm yet again. We know that he likes to take the limbs of his opponents out. We know that if he can gain an advantage through sheer um, technical ability, he will. But a dragon screw attempt and a, a, a successful dragon screw by Jordan Chase, the blueprint. And now willing to once again pull out the band Peter England move, that wrist clutch assault. You know, anything that's going to assault your wrist probably should be banned. It's one of the most delicate bones in our body. And, and someone that wants to attack that, that bone and really cause damage. Uh-oh, the blackout perhaps. And this time able to hit it. Anyone that really wants to cause damage like that should be banned in general. Two. But only a two count. Brad Winters able to, count, uh, to kick out there. Jordan Chase went for some, some sort of springboard maneuver. 
Brad Winters locking in the Camaro lock. Yet again, could this be it? Jordan Chase is flailing and a submission victory here by the returning Ladies Brad gentlemen, Winters winner looking better Beyond than ever. Mission, the No Limit Soldier, Brad Winters. Brad Winters looking truly limitless here tonight. Anyone that had doubts about how healthy he is, how far he's willing to go to get a win, I hope you have your answers now. You love to see it. Brad Winters coming back, showing us all what he is made of. Can't wait to see what's in his future. But now, what's in our future is Mac Daddy Furnace, the White Rose, taking on the 8th Coyote Pinkish. Mac Daddy Furnace has had a little more luck than he recent, er, previously had when he first started here in Covenant Pro Wrestling. I'm wondering if Mac Daddy Furnace is going to have his night yet again, or if Pinkish, the 8th Coyote, if the uh, Traveler's Chosen Hunter is going to have uh, more success. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it has a time limit of 20 minutes. Introducing first, making their way to the ring from the tower, weighing in at 240 pounds, this is the Traveler Chosen Hunter, Pinkett. The Traveler's Chosen Hunter, the XO Pinkish, hasn't had a win here in coming to pro wrestling as of yet. Mac Daddy Furnace, you know, has been on a little bit of a roll recently. It was a slow roll to begin with, but now it's speeding up in its pace. Um, but Pinkish is looking to make his mark on coming to pro wrestling. So, you know, I wonder what's going on in his mind tonight. I wonder how he's processing the situation that he finds himself in after losing the Logan Faller on the last episode, he's got to do something pretty big here tonight to put away Mac Daddy Furnace, the White Rose. And now for his opponent, making his way to the ring from Bradford, England, weighing in at 245 euros, $245 and $245 pounds. This is the embodiment of excellence, Mac Daddy Furnace. This is a matchup of two men with a multitude of monikers. Uh, to keep with the M theme I was going with there. Um, they are known as many, many things, and all of them are true. The embodiment of excellence, Mac Daddy Furnace, making his way to the ring. You know, he's one of the best competitors that Covenant Pro Wrestling has. One day, he hopes to win the Covenant Pro Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship, and on the run that he's had recently, especially after, you know, embarrassing the ref last episode, um, you think he's on his way there. Mac Daddy has feuded with several people, including um, Morgan Sharp, including our famous Dragon Kid. And you have to wonder, even though these two men are more on the heel side, if that's going to be another duplicate of uh, just another feud. You know, it seems like when Mac Daddy Furnace puts his heart in something, he takes everything really personally. And uh, that's one of the things you really like about the guy, you know? Uh, he can be a little bit of a bit of an asshole, but whenever he does something, he gives you 110%. Pinkish working away on the fingers and then going up to the top rope. A double foot stop on target by Pinkish. 
the XO out of place. As he is so called in some circles, the big huge bail throw there. Pinfall. Not uh not the right time for a pinfall here, if I'm I'm being honest. Uh Mag Daddy Furnace is going to take a lot more damage than that to uh be taken out of this matchup. And Pinkus just hasn't done the work as of yet. Pinkus sent outside Mag Daddy Furnace. Shoulder block and a sunset flip powerbomb on the barely padded concrete followed up by a huge knee strike now like i said mac daddy furnace can be a bit of an asshole he can be uh, a little bit of a grating personality i mean he drives fast cars listens to fast music and his favorite pastime is flipping off children as they, uh, you know, sell lemonade and lemonade stands. Is, you know, if you listen to CovenantProWrestling.com, our interviews say that that is his favorite thing to do, and he's just a little bit of a weird character. But in the ring, he is one of the best. Double foot stomp to the face. Very creative offense there by Back Daddy Furnace. Has Pinkish in a little bit of a bad situation. Suplex here. No brain buster on the barely padded concrete. That will rattle some gears if you're Pinkish. Make your exosuit or your uh, equipment not function properly. And Pinkish trying to get some distance between himself and Mac Daddy Furnace power bomb attempts, and he is successful, nearly clipping Mac Daddy Furnace's head on the guardrail. Mac Daddy sent inside the ring. Pinkish hammering away with a clubbing blow, and a neck breaker, perhaps no, a forearm to the back of the head. It's not pretty, but it works. I'm not a submission specialist, guys, but I can tell you that that probably hurts. Springboard moonsault attempt. Mac Daddy Furnish looking to impress us here tonight, but unable to make the mark on that one. Pinkish fighting back, battling back, going up to the top. Double foot stomps yet again, perhaps? No. A double rotation moonsault, but the knees were up. Mac Daddy Furnace showing us something we haven't seen from him um, very much before. You know, this determination and will to win and do it cleanly. Mac Daddy Furnace is the kind of guy that'll take a shortcut. Mac Daddy Furnace will um, do anything it takes to win, regardless of whether you view it as clean or dirty or whatever. But tonight, He's looking pretty damn spotless in his technique. Knee strikes to the head. I don't know if that mask or that uh, that shroud protects Pinkish very much. Mac Daddy Fern is going up to the second rope. I think he went there for a blockbuster. Unable to hit it, but you know, not not slowed down very much by that missed attempt. Slingshotting him over the top rope. And still battling. Still rallying for a win here. Power bomb perhaps, but Mac Daddy Furnace yet again. A float over DDT. And going right back. Going right back to these hands. Looking to damage a few servos, looking to kick some things out of alignment there on the hands of Pinkish. But Pinkish, dragon screw, has a moment, a, a bit of breathing room, and I guess turnabout is fair play with these two, because now Pinkish working on the fingers, the fleshy fingers and hands of Mac Daddy Furnace, and applying a submission hold here. Elbows to the face mask region of Pinkish. Mac Daddy Furnace and Pinkish looking 
to pick their spot. And, you know, fortunately for Pinkish, he was the one to be able to make that exchange. But now, Mac Daddy Furnace, as quick as I say that, working back on those servos, trying to damage some equipment. And a huge no-look senton there, a big, um, big senton Atomico. Right, Daddy Furnace. Elbows to the midsection. Pinkish looking for something big here. Perhaps the jackhammer that he likes to employ, that delayed, delayed suplex. And now we see the EXO trying to make uh, the green and white turn into white and red, and he is successful there. And for good measure, a giant punch to the side of the cranium. And welcome to the Tangled Shore pinfall. Two, but only a two count. Mac Daddy Furnace is busted the hell open here. A huge gash on the side of the face. Slamming Pinkish down. The uh, blood loss and the vision impairment doesn't seem to be affecting him very much. And a stock market crash. Pinfall. But only a two. Pinkish rolling his shoulder up in sheer desperation. But now, Mac Daddy Furnace looking for something big here. Box office breaker. Two. Somebody go tell the uh, the creators of Avatar 2 that the box office has already been broken here tonight. Springboard Moonsault. Gamagiri counter pinkish back in control. And yet again, working on the fingers. You know, I, it, it's a slightly different maneuver when you think about pinkish working on the organic biology of Mac Daddy Furnace versus his servo to metal and a huge slam by Pinkish. I would have went for a pinfall there, but Pinkish has something bigger planned. And this might be the Thunder Crash pinfall. Two. But Mac Daddy Furnace still has more in the tank, still has more in the bank, if you will. But the energy expended by both of these men is starting to show. Pinkish went for a big springboard. Moonsault, excuse me there. Springboard, Moonsault. But unable to hit it. Half dragon, half... Um, Half snap dragon suplex, whatever. A half Nelson dragon suplex. You know, I don't know how I have a job sometimes with the way that I call these moves. A huge elbow drop in the middle of the ring. Mac Daddy Furnace meandering around the canvas there. Going to pick his spot. And now he has decided to lock in a tequila sunrise. He has that arm wrapped around the leg there. And he's just wrenching, wrenching back as hard as he can. Pinkish somehow, some way, able to hold on, able to withstand. Mac Daddy Furnace going up. And the double foot stomps yet again. A pinfall. One, two, but only a two. Only a two. And another springboard moonsault. This time, Mac Daddy Furnace connecting with the back of Pinkish, showing him how it's done, but Pinkish still, still has some fight left in him. This late in the match, completely obliterating the midsection abdominal region with his knees there of Mac Daddy Furnace. Countering. And yet again, we see the stomps to the fingers. Fans in the front row getting up close and personal 
with the EXO from the tower. And we are getting up close and personal with Mac Daddy Furnace here at the announce table. And Pink is just feeling himself, gesturing to Mac Daddy Furnace. Tearing away at that mouth and nose and stomping on the back of the head. And welcome to the Tangled Shore. Get your postcard now. Dude. Get your welcome to the Tangled Shore postcards on CovenantProWrestling.com. Springboard moves all from the bottom rope there. But Mac Daddy Furnace using those strong and powerful legs to counter out. But now, a box office breaker and a pinfall. One, two, three. Jesus. I thought it was over. The fans are on their feet. They're screaming one more time. Mac Daddy Furnace going for that stock market crash. A pinfall. Referee Leonard Seymour right in the action. Two. And a Mac Daddy Furnace if you if you're Mac, you gotta be proud of all the success he has shown, all the success he has gained here in coming to pro wrestling. Even though he is a little bit of a twerp, he is turning himself around, becoming one of the best competitors that we have. And um uh, you know he's gonna win and you can take that one to the bank. A few moments later. Wait a minute, what's this? Looks like Pinkish is leaving the arena. Might be getting some mineral water there that you can buy on CovenantProWrestling.com. But uh, who the hell is this? Some masked assailant attacking, attacking Pinkish. A huge number of body blows there. And just working away on the EXO that just competed in a hard-fought matchup. I literally have no idea who this could be. But they're slamming Pinkish against that car. This is just insane. We need somebody out here. We need security. We need medical attention. Some sort of repairman to help Pinkish repair that suit. He is obviously damaged at this point and being slammed on the side of that car. Whoever that is, we want answers. But right now, we're moving on in the action. Lauren Osborne, the Welsh Wonder Kid, taking on Emma Barkley, the California sweetheart. These two have, you know, had a very uh, friendly rivalry going on in recent weeks. Um, teaming together against Lex Hook and Max Wheeler. Uh, unsuccessful in that. Um, an episode ago, but right now they're facing each other. They want to bring the very best out of each other. And I know from both of these people how they compete and how they are inside and outside Ladies the ring. And gentlemen, the That's exactly what we're going to get. Is scheduled for one fall at a time limit of 20 minutes. Introducing first. Approaching the ring from the Welsh Valley's Wales, this is the Welsh Valley Wonder Kid, Lauren Osborne. Lauren Osborne, the shy Welsh woman, making her way to the ring. You know, the moment that she steps in and that bell rings, she becomes a completely different person. Don't let her demeanor right now fool you. You know, she is fun loving and shy and a little bit reserved. But when she turns, uh, when when she gets into that ring, she turns into a fierce animal that is completely unpredictable. That's why she's one of the best competitors that we have on the women's side of the roster. And Emma Barkley, as much of a fan favorite as she is, is going to have her hands full with Lauren Osborne. And her opponent, making her way to the ring from Huntington Beach, California, this is California sweetheart, Emma Barkley. You know, they say where there's smoke, there's fire, but in Covenant Pro Wrestling, where there's smoke, there is Emma Barkley and a likely um, completely eaten package of Betty Fights uh, wonderful bettables 
that are out on CovenantProWrestling.com for the holiday season. Uh, Betty Fight Christmas Bettable. Get them now. Use promo code POPEPRO on CovenantProWrestling.com for a 25% off discount. Now the skateboard kid, uh, Emma Barkley, showing that she is far better or, or, or far more than just a skateboard kid. Uh, she can do it all. She is one of the best competitors, even though she is one of our newest competitors and one of the less seasoned competitors that we have in coming at pro wrestling because she hasn't been in the business for very long. But she is quickly proving that she is a natural at this sport. Lauren Osborne out of the gate. Very, very effective. But these two over recent weeks have come to know each other so well. A huge kick in the corner sends Lauren Osborne down. And we, we see that familiarity come into play. Lauren Osborne uh, just tossing Emma Barkley down to the canvas and over the top rope. Big punch there, attempts to land another one, but Emma Barkley coming through the middle rope and a shotgun drop kick, dropping Emma Barkley or dropping Lauren Osborne down. Emma Barkley on the top rope, a huge, huge moonsault. I don't think I've seen an arc on a moonsault like that in so, so very long. And I think it's been years. Emma Barkley in the corner, Lauren Osborne playing smart, working on that leg, taking the vertical base out of Emma Barkley. And we see kind of a, a reverse situation here and just mirroring each other, having a little bit of fun with that, that shotgun drop kick through the middle row. And that is the kind of friendly competition that you get when Lauren Osborne and Emma Barkley are in the ring with one another. <laughs> Emma Barkley, twisting cutter there. Looking for something, an insiguri, a very low insiguri there. Lauren Osborne reaching for that bottom rope, hoping to, you know, find a way to get back to her feet. But she is locked. She is locked in the submission here until that elbow strike is able to get her back up to her feet. Pinfall here. Emma Barkley, two, no, only a one count. I was so sure it was going to be a two at least. But Lauren Osborne has more fight than the average bear here. These strikes send Emma Barkley into the corner. And a suplex sending Emma Barkley's body ricocheting back into the middle of the ring. Russian leg sweep with authority. You know, you don't often get to add with authority to a move like a Russian leg sweep, but the way that Lauren Osborne does it is just so ferocious that it's applicable. Yet again, playing smart, working on the limbs. Series of knee strikes here. Now, if you're tuning in to Covenant Pro Wrestling for the first time, you can finally see what I was talking about with Lauren Osborne. The gears shift when she stepped into the ring with the bell rings. Um, she is a completely different person. And we're seeing that here. It's ringing true here today. A dragon sleeper. No, that was locked in with perfection, but Emma Barkley is a fighter. She knows Lauren Osborne so well. And now she is bracing for a comeback here. Kick to the midsection, blocked a shot. Lauren Osborne fighting back, but Emma Barkley blocks a shot as well. 
and slams Lauren into the corner. And a huge suplex. Emma can hit you with those suplexes from anywhere. Going up to the top rope, Lauren, Lauren Osborne is in trouble. But Lauren Osborne was blessed with a miracle. Uh, Emma Barkley unable to hit that. Miracles do exist, perhaps. And a DDT sends these uh, the, the uh, opponent down for Lauren Osborne. This friendly contest is becoming increasingly violent. That double super kick, a pinfall. But Lauren Osborne not willing to relent here, not willing to give up. All of the different counters, all of the telegraphs that we're seeing, it just goes to show how well that these two know each other. Emma Barkley going for something big here. California dreaming. Lauren Osborne may be out. She may be napping right now. One, two, but only a two count. Snap suplex, Emma Barkley now in full control. Lauren Osborne needs to do something to get back the momentum. Going up, she may be going for the Airborne Osborne. But no, she motions for Emma Barkley to get up, allows her to get up. Two. A falling code breaker from the top rope, not enough for Lauren Osborne to get the victory here. Lauren Osborne, springboard, a nice kick right on target there by Lauren. The knee of youth, I believe that was. But now Lauren on the floor getting her fingers stomped and just as I say that they're back up to their feet and Lauren Osborne showing her her technical prowess, showing her her skills and situa situational awareness using that top rope. And Emma Barkley doing the same thing when she manages to counter out of that uh, very desperate situation. Suplex there. Emma Barkley sent for a ride. Lauren Osborne perhaps trying to go up top for the, the Airborne Osborne. We've seen it before. We'll see it again. The Airborne Osborne on target. One, two. I thought that was three. The crowd yet again. Rowdy is all hell saying fight forever and they just damn might. Went for a suplex, Lauren Osborne able to kick out of it. Emma Barkley seems to be rocked by that knee to the head and now sent to the barely padded concrete where nothing good can happen. You know, sometimes when you're on the barely padded concrete, all you want is a little bit of a uh, little bit of comfort, and you can get your very own comfort with our brand new custom Covenant Pro Wrestling pillows, only sold on CovenantProWrestling.com for three easy payments of $9.99 and one complicated payment of 99 cents, deducted one cent at a time every month.
huge slam there by Emma Barkley. Thought she was going for a pinfall, but insult to injury. Uh, seemingly attempting to smear the face paint off of Lauren Osborne's face, but Lauren Osborne has a little bit more left to offer here with a huge knee strike to the face of Emma Barkley, nearly knocking her hat off in a rope break. Situational awareness on display yet again. Emma Barkley, for her age, for her experience, she is very increasingly impressive. Lauren Osborne going up yet again. The airborne Osborne on target, dead center in the middle of the ring. Two and a winner the count. By way of pinfall, the Welsh Valley Wonder Kid, Lauren Osborne. Lauren Osborne getting the win against her friend Emma Barkley. And I am told in just a moment, we're going to be sent to some footage that happened on la our last episode, Covenant Pro Wrestling Uproar. Show of respect there by uh, Lauren Osborne and Emma Barkley. They care about each other very much. And that is not going to be the last time that we see them in a ring together, whether they're a team or whether op they're opponents. But right now we're being taken to some footage that happened last uproar we see this masked assailant uh, you know putting some sort of explosive on will sheridan's car and then we have some sort of warning some coronians i don't necessarily know what coronians are but i i don't think they're good news for covenant pro wrestling and speaking of things that are not good news this matchup is not good news for william black because he's going head to head with the demonic jester the entertainer will william black we have to give him credit though he's one of the best competitors that we have he was in title contention for the cpw world heavyweight championship he's been a champion before but the entertainer is a different level of fear different level of pain different level of competitor he's unlike anything that any of us have really ever seen Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall with a time limit of 20 minutes in producing first. Making their way to the ring, weighing in at 269 pounds from Biloxi, Mississippi, this is the Yarrow of Wrestling, Williams Black. Well, we can say how unique and how unorthodox the entertainer is as a competitor but we have to give credit to william black he was the only one that was brave enough to accept the demonic jester's challenge for a match here tonight and that says volumes about the wolf of war that says volumes about the so-called yarl of wrestling as he is so-called uh, now here in coming to pro wrestling you know anyone that is willing to step you know face to face inside the ring with someone that's from a parallel dimension that's lived for thousands and thousands of years that exists only to inflict pain and punishment that is a different kind of bravery and uh william black you gotta like his odds here because inner painter hasn't had much success in covenant pro wrestling but that doesn't mean he's not gonna fuck you up just a little bit Making his way to the ring, currently weighing at 160 pounds from your darkest fears. This is the Entertainer. You know they they uh, announced the Entertainer from your darkest fears, but honestly, my darkest fears is just uh, needing to bathe in a tub of mayonnaise. I'm not a fan. Not a fan of mayonnaise at all. I think. Mayonnaise shouldn't exist. So I probably shouldn't have said that when Entertainer's coming out to the ring. He probably heard me. And um, I hope there's not mayonnaise in my future. Really, do, really don't want any of that. Nope. Crap. I gotta get a new job, don't I? Shit.
William Black um, taking the first shot from Inner Painter very well, just pushing him off like a small child. And yet again, we see that. Going for a suplex, Inner Painter so nimble, so quick. Jumping over William Black like the candlestick. And. Busting William Black open almost immediately. And Inner Painter asking for the Wolf of War to get up. Arm wrench, a leg drop. So far in this matchup, Inner Painter is doing all the things right, wearing the big 269 pound a Wolf of War from Biloxi, Mississippi down, um, you know, allowing him to expel more energy, allowing um, him to call more of the shots, and just sitting back and thinking about ways to counter. It's quite impressive. You see it yet again, the quickness of the inner painter. The chop block there. Knee to the back of the, the shoulder area. And Inner Painter heading up to the top row. Elbow drop right on target. And a leg drop for good measure. A two count. Match continues. Referee Leonard Seymour in perfect position. You know, more has to be said about Inner Painter, he challenged the entire locker room. The entire locker room. And the only one that had the guts to, to accept the challenge was Wogan Black. Referee Leonard Seymour getting a little bit in the way there. But a tope suicida suicide dive by the Inner Painter. You don't see it often, but when he does it, you know, as much as you don't want to say it, he is like a swan in the air. Like he was born to be up there or created to be up there or manifested. I'm not sure how Inner Painter came to be, but the but the quickness. The quickness and the relentlessness of Inner Painter. It is something to be in awe of. But right now, William Black able to muster up some offense against the demonic jester, grabbing him by the hair. And just laying him out as he just tries to choke whatever sort of life is in the Inner Painter's vessel. Slamming Inner Painter in the corner. William Black trying to pick his spots well. Shoulder block. But Inner Painter. This is back and forth. These knee strikes and kicks in bunches are working quite well for William Black right now. Mounting the inner painter and just slamming away on his face. Very quick elbow drop. Got the hell out of dodge. A leg drop just as quick. Just a disrespectful slap, a spinning back kick, back and forth, back and forth. It feels like I'm looking at a, a grandfather clock here with just how the momentum is just swinging from side to side. It's a very unpredictable matchup. But William Black, as he stomps a hole in the inner painter, Going for a pinfall on two count. Referee Leonard Seymour says this match isn't over yet.
Entertainer, one of the uh, competitors that I don't know if submissions work with him very well. He seems when he uh, gets locked into submissions, he gains a second win. He likes the pain. He embraces the pain. So if I were William Black, I would try to be doing something that would, you know, get him a victory by surprise rather than just by sheer uh, wrenching force. Now, I know I'm not a competitor or anything like that, but I do have some experience with the entertainment's antics. And I, I have a whole book that I have written that I'm going to release on CovenantProWrestling.com shortly on how to beat the entertainer. Now my good friend Jack Colby has read it. He's already given it five stars. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But a violence party, uh, William Black certainly wasn't on the lookout for that because it seemed to come out of nowhere in a pinfall. And only a two count. And now we saw this debut last episode. Inner Painter calls this the Masochism Tango. The slow crawl into that twisting face buster there. Two, but only a two. Double axe handle attempt by the inner painter, but William Black finding some momentum here, able to avert another shot. Kicks to the chest in the midsection of the inner painter, or knees perhaps. And now we see him working on the fingers, working on the area that was formerly clogged, if you remember in CWL. He seemed to have gotten rid of that because it is illegal here in Covenant Pro Wrestling. But I wouldn't want to be anywhere near those finger fingertips either way. Huge knee. And just clubbing blows to the half mask of the inner painter, looking for an opportunity to bust him open and he is able to do so on the exposed side of the face, a pinfall here. Very good leverage. You know, he got the pinfall firmly in control there, firmly locked in. That was almost over, but inner painter is a different breed of competitor, but now mounting a comeback of sorts. Just stomping the chest and head of Entertainer into the canvas. Low cross body. Entertainer going up to the second rope. And a double axe handle attempt this time. Able to get it. And William Black rising up like the Phoenix on the top rope as well. Going for something big perhaps. Went for a forearm, but Inner Painter able to avert it. In a spinning back fist, another. You know, it's not easy to lug around 267 pounds, but right now, the Inner Painter, even though he is, you know, currently only 160 pounds in his current form, is able to do it. But how do you prepare for a competitor that can just change forms on a win? Turnabout fair play yet again in this matchup. Clubbing blows, clubbing forearms to the back. William Black went to call his shot there with that spring, springboard maneuver. But just the sheer, the sheer, uh, you know, loss of energy here. The exhaustion not working well. But a king killer here on the inner painter with a pinfall might work pretty damn well. Two. But only a two count. Inner painter is somehow, some way, still in this one. Stomping away at those fingers. 
You see that here a lot in Covenant Pro Wrestling, and each and every time I see it, it just makes me have chills up and down my spine. It's just so vicious, uh, the assault, you know, that we see. And speaking of vicious, being tossed over the top rope, Ender Painter is definitely not having a good day with that one. But, you know, just as we say that, he's turning some stuff around. And the announce table is getting a little weary here. I know I sure as hell am. Inner Painter feeling a little smug, feeling a little full of himself, not seeing the need to really um, fight head to head with William Black. He thinks he has it in the bag. Um, Black went for the Black Fang there just a moment ago, unable to hit it, and sent Ender Painter out to the barely padded concrete yet again. We are more than halfway through this matchup, sitting close to nine minutes here. What could possibly happen here? A powerbomb attempt on the apron of the ring and just twisting around. The Ender Painter is just being ragdolled by William Black and William Black is feeling it here tonight as well we do have until a 20 count but William Black elects to go back outside restarting the count and restarting the assault on the inner painter See that whipping uh, slam from the inner painter. He grabbed a handful of William Black's hair. Back and forth, back and forth on the outside. And they're still coming back and forth from that one. Uh, the only thing going back and forth are the stars that William Black is seeing at this point. Six count, but now we're back in the ring. Someone looking to get a three count. Enter Painter. Whipping William Black into the corner. Could we see the violence party yet again? And yes, we do. Right on demand. Just like good pay-per-view. Um, so speaking of pay-per-views, we're going to see Covenant Pro Wrestling Hardcore Holiday on pay-per-view next week. Or uh, in two weeks. Pinfall there. So check with your local cable provider and watch us on CovenantProWrestling.com. Making the slow, slow crawl over to William Black. He could be in for a little dancing, a little masochism tango, and he is a pinfall. One, two, and, and a three count. By way of pinfall, the demonic jester, Interpainer. Interpainer making a statement here against William Black. I can't believe it. I can't, I, you know, I can't even imagine what's going through the head of William Black, but I know Interpainer is just getting started. I hate to think about what is going to happen next with the inner painter. He gets on a, a roll, he gets on uh, some momentum, and there is literally nothing stopping this demonic, demonic force. But now we are led to Butch in the middle of the ring. We have seen a new Butch in recent weeks. This deranged individual assaulting Jacob Nitro several weeks ago, but Jacob Nitro, I guess Butch said he wasn't, he was done hiding, but I'm not sure if he's done hiding uh, after tonight. I think he might want to go into hiding. Witness protection, a crossfire there.
Wait a minute. Jacob Nitro is wearing Butch's old mask. Going up to the top rope. The Nitro boost. Butch is just unable to come back from this. He's been so surprised and so ambushed. And we, I don't even know what to say right now. Jacob Nitro making a statement, wearing the mask of Butch, wearing that so-called safety net of Butch that he's taken off and unleashed, you know, to terror on Covenant Pro Wrestling. But I guess it won't last long because Jacob Nitro is not going to stand for it. And speaking of things that, you know, we aren't going to stand for, in recent weeks we have seen Jamie Clark, you know, ahead of our time, Jamie Clark, doing some very nefarious things to the Dower Stranger, who is going to be accompanied on this one-on-one -on -one match with Ebac. You know, J.B. Clark is a fan favorite here in Covenant Pro Wrestling. I just don't know why he chooses to act like such an asshole, like such a little prick. You know, he's he's been attacking Dower uh, on the, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the backstage contest. area frequently. For one fall, and it has a time limit of 20 minutes. Making his way to the ring first. Weighing in at 256 pounds from London, England. This is Jamie Clark. And you know, I just have to ask Jamie Clark, the, the technical three or four year old based on time travel uh, portal shenanigans. Um, do you not know how to treat your elders? You know, I don't know how it works with um, with robots and everything like that, or or whatever the Dower Stranger is, uh, but I'm pretty sure he's your elder as far as his software updates go. I think he's on like 6.7, so I think that makes him older than you. You know, this, this uh, feud with the Dower Stranger, this alliance the Dower Stranger has with Ebac is forming a feud. I would say perhaps, and I don't know if it has an end in sight. And now for his opponent, making his way to the ring, accompanied by Evan from a secure location. This is the Dower Stranger. The, the Dower Stranger making his way to the ring with Evac production truck, slightly confused, um, still thinking that this this is just Dower Ranger. We have been told several times that these uh, beings that Evac has been um, uh, seen with, making appearance with, are not the Dower Ranger. Uh, we've seen the Chowder Ranger. We've seen the Dower Stranger. We don't know who we're going to see next, but we're told that they're not Dower uh, or not Dower Ranger, perhaps. So maybe Jamie Clark needs to stop uh, with these nefarious attacks and these uh, unfortunate, you know, shows of just assholelessness. That's all you can say. That's all you can really call it. Notorious, nefarious displays of assholelessness. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to see another one here tonight as Dower Stranger. Uh, the security ranger is uh, trying to uh, make the best of this matchup. I know that his favorite thing is not competing in the middle of a wrestling ring. He likes to make sure people are safe and secure and feel comfortable. Right now, you know, in order to defend himself and secure safety for himself, he has to go head to head with Jamie Clark. Rolling uppercut there. Jamie Clark spinning the, the Dower Stranger over and locking him in this modified STF maneuver. It's almost a side saddle STF with a little wider of a curve on the legs. Dower the quickness. Sending Jamie Clark to the canvas. And an arm bar locked in. But Jamie Clark, the workhorse, the powerhouse here. Able to counter and continue on with this matchup. Jamie Clark, of course, of the Clark Dynasty, trained by Michael Young. 
um, you know, obviously is the seed of Cassidy Clark and and Alex Clark, excuse me. I've been drinking uh, Betty Fights Fizzy Soda that you can buy on CovenantProWrestling.com as well. And I'm, I'm having a little bit of a, a burping fit here tonight. So excuse me in that regard. Pinfall here. Only a one count. Jamie Clark, as mentioned before, is a workhorse, a powerhouse. It's going to take a lot to uh, get him down for the count. Jamie Clark going for two massive lariats both times, unable to hit it. But Miss Maneuvers aren't going to change much for him. He'll just keep trying and trying until he succeeds. And he did succeed there. And just clubbing blows to the chassis of, of the Dower Stranger to the, the metal cranium like metal cranium like object that you would call his head. But is it really his head? You know, when you're talking about machines, when you're talking about uh, exoskeletons, when you're talking about uh, all kinds of androids and things like that that we see in Covenant Pro Wrestling in the wrestling world in general. What do you call these things? Well, I call that a brutal knee strike, a pinfall, and a one count. The Dower Stranger still in this one. Jamie Clark, a huge slam. You know, working on those shoulders as he uh, lands that maneuver. That neck and shoulder region must be on fire. Dower Stranger are running in Sigiri, sending Jamie Clark to the, the middle of the ring. Uh, how's the canvas taste from here, bro? And an elbow drop. Momentum has shifted in this matchup. Springboard moonsault, move after move. Continually impressive, a pinfall. Referee winner Seymour says one, two, but only a two. And you have to give respect to EBAC. A lot of competitors, a lot of competitors when they come out to be a manager or an onlooker on matches, they like to pull dirty maneuvers and little tricks. But EBAC has been a, a good sport through the entire process. Hasn't gotten involved. Is there to cheer on his friend, the Dower Stranger. A huge slam there. Jamie Clark has an opening for something big. Back to the future, slamming him down with authority, a one, a two, but only a two count. Jamie Clark unable to put the Dower Stranger away. But now here we go, Stranger is getting up. And no stranger to the 585, the Covenant Pro Wrestling fans go wild as a pinfall is locked in. One, two. But only a two count, the Dower Stranger still has more in reserve. An extra battery, uh, perhaps. One of the Tesla batteries, if you will. Even though that's sort of controversial at this point. And now, controversial, yet again, is using the apron, that hardest part of the ring. And Jamie Clark does that to perfection. Hurricane Rana on the barely padded concrete, and we are still off to the races. Just over five minutes in this matchup. Dower Stranger, perfect, perfect heel kick. Uh, applied to perfection on Jamie Clark. Barely padded concrete is not a good place to be right now. So I imagine that both of these competitors want to get out of that situation. But Dower Stranger uh, doesn't seem to be a stranger of, to, to getting a little hardcore. 
Speaking of getting a little hardcore, make sure to order Covenant Pro Wrestling Hardcore Holiday live on pay-per-view in two weeks. Uh, you can watch that on your local cable provider or CovenantProWrestling.com. The barely padded concrete once again coming into play. But a spinning back kick there. Dower Stranger able to gain a little bit of momentum. A five count here. Spinning him around. But at the count of eight, the Dower Stranger makes his way back into the ring. Takes a little bit of a break. Embraces the safety and security of the empty ring. Leonard Seymour isn't a threat and Dower Stranger knows it. But right now it's time to eliminate the threat that is Jamie Clark. A pinfall. Two. But only a two count. The Dower Stranger with a sit-out face buster. Springboard moonsault from the top rope. Beautifully executed. The Stranger Danger! Pinfall! But only a two! Referee Leonard Seymour right in, in position. Right on the mark. Kick to the head. Going for the Stranger Danger yet again, but Jamie Clark too powerful, too quick. Brutal power slam and now brutal punches to the side of the head. The Dower Stranger is in trouble. And a knee strike to the face. To that mechanical cranium of the Dower Stranger. And the spinning head scissors by the Dower Stranger, giving him just a little bit of an opening. But Jamie Clark seems to be invigorated by all of the big high impact maneuvers he's hit so far in this match. Not looking to hit the brakes yet, raping him over the top rope, but Dower Stranger fighting back. Jamie Clark fighting back as well. A blue thunder bomb by Jamie Clark. And that modified STF locked in. Could this be it? And it and is the this contest. By the way of submission, Jamie Clark. Jamie Clark had to make a, you know, a last second decision to preserve his own safety and, you know, or Dower Stranger had to make a last second decision, I should say, against Jamie Clark. And, um, you know, you can't fault him for that. But wait a minute. Dower Stranger and Jamie Clark seems to be holding Stranger hostage. Stranger beeping some sort of message at Jamie. And Ebak trying to talk sense. Trying to talk sense into the in incensed Jamie Clark. It would be better if he tore him wire from wire. I don't know if I agree with that. Just let him go, Jamie. Ebak hoping that cooler... Cooler heads will prevail. And it seems like they will. At least here today. E back. I was going to say E back entering the ring, going to have a face off with Jamie Clark, but Jamie Clark thinks better of it, escapes the ring, and coming up the Hardcore Holiday, you've got to imagine that these two want to settle this. 
Ebag saying the consequences uh, are coming for Jamie Clark and he better be ready for when they do. But when is that going to happen and how? But right now we're going into tag team competition. Dragon Kid, the Fire Spirit, Morgan Sharp, the Renegade versus Damon Ryder and Jack Harnage, the Adrenaline Junkie and Thumbtack Jack are tag team champions. This, you know, has been a bit of rivalry that's been developing over recent weeks and recent shows. And you've got to imagine that Dragon Kid and Morgan Sharp, the, who are in tag team title contention, want to get a win over the tag team champions. And I've, I've heard that, ladies and gentlemen, the following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. And it has a time limit of 20 minutes, making their way to the ring first. At a combined weight of 428 pounds, they are your world heavyweight tag team champions, Damon Ryder and Jack Harnage. I've heard that Damon Ryder and Jack Harnage are willing to give um, Dragon Kid and Morgan Sharp a shot at the tag team championship. And this, this matchup is going to determine who gets to pick the stipulation at Hardcore Holiday. Jack Ryder, uh, or Damon Ryder and Jack Carnage, rather, have been very dominant since gaining those tag team championships. Uh, they've developed a, uh, you know, a kinship and a friendship, unlike many in Covenant Pro Wrestling, and they will do anything to win. They are very dangerous, but so too, uh, this man, who's coming out right now, is dangerous as well. And now for the proponents. Introducing first, making their way to the ring from San Antonio, Texas, weighing in at 207 pounds, this is the last Gunslinger, Morgan Sharp. Morgan Sharp, the renegade, the last Gunslinger, the uh, confidant of the Dragon Kid, making his way to the ring. He's been impressive in recent weeks with the alliance that he has uh, formed with Dragon Kid. You know, he's had matches interfered on, Dragon Kid's had matches interfered on, but those two have stayed true to themselves, um, stayed prepared to deal with uh, the the tricky and, uh, I don't know, I, I, I guess you would say, I keep saying nefarious, but there are other words. I need to get a pocket thesaurus for when I'm doing commentary. But um, they have been able to withstand some of the trickery that they've, you know, had on their hands with the, the tag team champs. Blame Dr. Nefarious. That's all I think of now. And now for his part, making his way to the ring from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, weighing in at 160 pounds, this is the Dragon Hero, Dragon Kid. Dragon Kid in recent weeks has told us that he wants to be a hero, that is his life long dream is to be a hero for children across the globe. Um, to be a good influence on those who are coming up in the business, to teach them respect, to teach them, um, you know, all the tools needed for success. And he has been doing that so far with Morgan Sharp.
Dragon Kid looking more serious than ever here tonight. He knows what, are at, what is at stake here. Uh, I think the tag team title shot is a sure bet, but you don't want people as deranged as, and as crazed as Damon Ryder and Jack Harnage picking the stipulation. You just don't. Just seconds away from this matchup, you can feel the tension in the air. And right now, here we go. Morgan Sharp starting this one off with Jack Harnage. Thumbtack Jack as he is lovingly called by whoever call him friends, which is not many. Shining Wizard right out of the gate here. Middle rope, springboard, moonsault, Jack Harnage. Jack Harnage is not a light man, I will tell you that. They're at a combined weight of 428 pounds, and Jack Harnage makes up most of that. But Damon Ryder, 188 of those pounds, making his way into the ring. Clubbing blow on the back of Morgan Sharp. But Morgan Sharp fighting. And a big lariat there. Dropping the tag team champion. Ripcord knee. I love the ripcord knee. They come out of nowhere. He uses them in bunches. And a double axe handle. Sending the tag team champion, Damon Ryder. Down to the canvas. Dragon Sleeper locked in here. Referee Leonard Seymour checking in. Getting a close look on the action. But Damon Ryder... The Maniac just fighting out of it. Double underhooks here. And a backbreaker. And Morgan Sharp started off as one of the competitors in Covenant Pro Wrestling that would pull these nefarious moves that would do these dirty maneuvers. And speaking of dirty maneuvers, there's one right there, the family jewel of uh, Morgan Sharp. Maybe damage there. But it, you know, Morgan started off as one of these characters that would do anything, take any advantage. And now with the, the help of Dragon Kid and the influence, he's become one of the uh, the cleanest fighters that we have. Managing to get the knees up, and I think the influence of Dragon Kid really has the potential to turn Morgan Sharp around, both in terms of uh, him as a person and as a competitor. Morgan Sharp, forearm to the face, attempting to smear the face paint of David Ryder just a little bit. Kick combination, twisting at the arm and uh, tripping Damon Ryder up. That was the perfect situation to tag Dragon Kid in so we can continue the momentum. Smart tag team wrestling, never letting um, one person get too tired, always making frequent tags. It's how it's supposed to be done. Springboard, crossbody, connects to Damon Ryder. But the Gamangiri counter from the floor takes out Dragon Kid, staggers him just a little bit, tries to step back and avert uh, some of that offense, but unable to do it. And Damon Ryder doing the same thing.
Demon Rider, I think he was going for that standing Spanish fly, unable to hit it. Dragon Kid hit a uh, couple of you know elbows, and now tagged in Jack Carnage, 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 as he is called, or Carnage, Carnage. I'm I'm not sure which way that goes, but find out on the uh, brand new almanac of wrestlers on CovenantProWrestling.com. All the information you would want on all of your favorites here, only for $25.99, plus shipping and handling. A huge uh, kick there, sending Dragon Kid to the canvas. Referee Leonard Seymour trying to get, uh, you know, a confirmed control of the action here, sending Dragon Kid outside. And Morgan Sharp trying to get a firm control of the match with a ripcord knee, able to hit it. Thought he was going to go for the either the bullseye or the high noon there. Usually that's what follows up those ripcord knees, but... Damon Ryder is just so, so aware of that. There's a big knee there from, from Morgan Sharp. The wild Texan from San Antonio. Dragging Damon Ryder over to the corner, busting him open while he's at it. And sending him over in the friendly corner. But a bulldog and a pinfall two no no two Jack Harnage right on the money able to break that up springboard kick to Harnage sending him outside getting a little bit of a breather there and this would be the time the perfect moment to go for a high noon go for the bullseye go for something big or go for the tag either way dragon kid will get it done we know he can a neck breaker damon rider damon rider he knows that move so well because it's in his repertoire as well the standing Spanish fly, not successful for Dragon Kid. And Damon, he's got that chokehold locked in. Morgan Sharp luckily able to uh, break up that submission. But Damon Ryder is standing moonsault, or standing shooting star press, I should say. And a tag by Jack Harnage, or to Jack Harnage. Standing crossbody. Very athletic by Harnage. Harnage is a massive guy. To see him doing stuff like that is it's pretty insane. The size differential between. Jack Harnage and Dragon Kid is greatly pronounced and we see that with the ease that these uh, these hand strikes are able to be applied by Harnage and speaking of hand strikes Harnage is working away at those fingertips and those hands of Dragon Kid a brutal knee to the side of the face this is not looking good another A takedown there. Open hand, open hand, hand strikes. I think Dragon Kid was busted open. And yeah, he sure as hell was. He is busted open to all hell there. What is he going to do here? A sliding drop kick and working sharp. I'm very impressed with what his partner is doing. And so is the crowd. You hear them chanting, this is awesome. And yes, it, it, it is indeed. Jack Harnage. 
Back in the ring. Grabbing Dragon Kid and sending him into the turnbuckle. Dragon Kid battling back. Nearly halfway through this contest. And another knee. Damon Ryder picking his spot. We see Dragon Kid is busted open. That is one of the most significant cuts I think we've seen in Covenant Pro Wrestling so far. He's back, elbow strikes, these forearm strikes. Maybe a combination of both. And you know, I think that was supposed to hit the head of Dragon Kid on the knee, but I think he hit the trachea of Dragon Kid. But Dragon Kid, a low drop kick, able to get some of the momentum back in his corner. And speaking of going back into his corner, he was going to try to get attacked from Morgan Sharp, but took a little bit too much time there. Super kick. German suplex had the arms uh, captured there. Very difficult to get out of it. Two. No, only a one count. Morgan Sharp breaks up the pin. Breaks up the pin before the two count yet again, but sent over the top rope. Dragon Kid DDT attempt. No, unable to hit it. Damon Ryder showing some of his skills there. Makes a tag to his partner Thumbtack Jack. And now things are about to get even more ugly because Thumbtack Jack is in the ring. One, two. I think that was the bad chiropractor he called it. DDT, Jack Harnage sent to the canvas, but elbow strike to the midsection to the abdomen. And now we see those palm strikes yet again. The double tap. Hits Dragon Kid. This could be it. Two. And your winners of the contest. Morgan Sharp. Pinball. Your world tag team champions. Damon Ryder and Jack Harnish. Morgan Sharp unable to make it into the ring. Um, to break up that pen attempt and now our tag team champions Covenant Pro Wrestling tag team champions Jack Harnage and Damon Ryder are going to pick the stipulation for Hardcore Holiday and now in just a moment I'm told that we're going to hear some words um, after the celebration of our tag team champions from our number one contender Jay Scott Hardcore Holiday is shaping up to be an eventful occasion. And unfortunately for our number one contenders for this the tag belts, I've reached it's my not limit. going their way. I was brought into this company to do two things. Win the CPW Championship and elevate Covenant Pro Wrestling to the next level. That's what the people want. They want to go to these big stadiums. They want to watch Covenant Pro Wrestling on network television. They True. want an exclusive CPW network app to watch all of the tape libraries and, and bonus features and whatever the hell else. That's what they want right now. But there's one man standing in the way of that. Our reigning CPW champion, Will Sheridan, who has done nothing but dodge my legitimate claim to that CPW championship ever since I arrived here in Covenant Pro. I don't know if he's Will, dodging it. You lost but, to true. Johnny D, and you're going to lose to me. The fact you are taking on matches without answering my claim shows that you are nothing but a pretender to the championship throne. The people in power in this company have made their voices heard. They want Jay Scott at the top. 
Why are you preventing that from happening? I'm not going to let you dodge anymore, Will. I am standing right here in this ring until I get the challenge that I have asked for. The challenge that I deserve. Will, where are you? Well, I guess that's our answer. El Mascara Negra seems to be attacking Will Sheridan, our chairman, our champion in the backstage area. And this does not look good for Will. Mascara has a chair in hand and just clubbing blows with that steel chair on the legs and the head of Will Sheridan. You know, Will Sheridan has had leg injuries in the past. And there again, he might just... He might just have another one. Ladies and gentlemen, approaching the and ring for what an the hell is this? contest. Weighing in at 289 pounds, he is the Raging Demon of Youngstown, Ohio, Johnny D. Johnny Davenport seemed to be taking advantage of the fact that Will Sheridan was just assaulted in the backstage area. You know, he defeated Will Sheridan last week. He propelled himself into stardom last week when he beat our champion. And, and right now, I think he wants to duplicate that process over again by defeating our number one contender. Because if he can do that, what does it say? What does it say about the roster? What does it say about Johnny D? And what does it say about his potential here? Johnny D has nothing to lose and everything to gain. And you can see the intensity in his eyes. But what, what is Jay Scott going to do? We heard from our announcer that this is an impromptu contest. So it seems like, it seems like they're going to fight. Jay Scott unprepared for this contest. Uh, no notice that it was going to occur. And Johnny D showing his strength right out of the gate. In a brutal, a brutal blow to the face, that spinning fist. Jay Scott has been on the back foot, but the quickness of Jay Scott being shown there as he attempted to counter. But Johnny D coming up all Johnny right now I guess that's the advantage of surprise contest Jay Scott the quote unquote greatest of all time hasn't had an opportunity to have a breather here didn't have an opportunity to plan for this and this very high angle Boston Crab locked in but Jay Scott the uh technical wonder that he is able to get out of it able to find a way to just force the hold to be to be broken and now we see for the very first time jay scott getting some momentum on johnny d and i believe this is the first time that these two have faced or these two have faced off and i'm sorry i was just uh, shocked by the ferocity of that blow that Jay Scott hit, hit Johnny D with. I'm just so shocked that he's able to stand. Johnny D sent outside. Barely padded concrete coming into play yet again. And perhaps a power bomb on the steel steps. And yes, it is. Jay Scott may have not been able to prepare for this match, but he can work on the fly. Double that up and call it a day. Get him in the ring, Jay, because this might be over. But Jay went for something big there. I could tell that he was going for something that he thought was going to end the matchup. Now you can just tell with competitors like that, but Johnny D going yet again for this Boston Crab. Going for the Boston Crab, has it locked in. I'm not sure if they have a uh, Crab in Youngtown, Ohio, or Youngstown, Ohio, but uh, make sure to stop by Colonel's Comics there in Youngstown and grab yourself the newest edition of Covenant Pro Wrestling Magazine, also available in digital on CovenantProWrestling.com.
Leonard Seymour, perfect position, calling the action right down the middle. That lock is um, you know, now broken, but it was locked in deep and tight. But Jay Scott battling back. Reverse DDT there. And the TV might fool you. Well, watching this on the broadcast, you might not recognize how ginormous both of these men are. And uh, especially in Jay Scott's case, you, you can't really appreciate how built and muscular this man is when he's standing next to Johnny D. But let me tell you, they are larger than life. Um, and then they are two of the, the burliest competitors that we have. A huge clothesline there. And, and speaking of the size of Johnny D, we see just how much bigger he is than Jay Scott. Just Jay unable to lift him up, unable to keep him up for a significant amount of time. You have to wonder what's going to happen when the Atom Smasher comes into play or he attempts the Atom Smasher. But the Hurricane Rana will do the job just as well. There, smart move by Jay. Working away on the tree trunk legs of Johnny D. Went for a lariat, was mounting a comeback there. But Johnny D, military press slam. Down with authority. Uh oh, we might be in for a drive by here. And we are. And the Demon's Wrath is hit. Two. But only a two count. Only a two count. Jay Scott is not out of this. He knows what's at stake. He is a number one contender. He has a reputation to live up to. A takedown. And he can just not. He cannot allow himself to lose in this situation. Jay Scott going for something big on the top rope, but unable to get it. Johnny D, multiple backbreakers here, rib breakers, if you will. A barrage of stomps, a two count, and it's still not good enough. Both of these competitors, you know, know that there is so much to prove, so much at stake, even in a non-title contest, even um, in an impromptu contest that wasn't supposed to even happen. A back suplex, backdrop suplex by Jay Scott. Perfectly uh, executed there. Pinfall. A two count. Leonard Seymour says this is far from over. And a power slam. Elbow drop right on the money. Wrenching at the neck of Johnny D. And Johnny D's shoulders are so broad. That's the first time I've ever really seen his neck. Power bomb perhaps by Johnny D. Walking him over towards the rope, dropping him on the barely padded concrete. And Johnny T making a statement. Throwing Jay Scott out of the ring, but Jay Scott making a statement of his own, getting back in before, before three out there. We have it to a count of 20. Call that uh, an express return. German suplex went for a bridge pin there, but Johnny D just so massive. He, he thought about it again, but this could be an Adam Smasher. But no. Johnny D counters into a German suplex of his own. 
Thought he was gonna go for the drive-by on Biscayne Ave yet again. Went for an elbow drop. Jay Scott. Jay Scott, fireman's carry position. And now he's looking for it. He's looking for it. Could it be? Leg hooked. Atom smasher. One, two, and a three count. contest, your number one contender for the Covenant Pro Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship, Jay Scott. Our number one contender made a statement here tonight fighting off the raging demon known as Johnny Davenport. You know, not letting him take the advantage and get a win. Going into Hardcore Holiday victorious is all that you could ask for. You know that he wanted to face Will Sheridan. You know that he wanted to have that belt around his waist tonight. But at Hardcore Holiday, he might be our next Covenant Pro Wrestling Champion. And it's got to feel good. What the hell is this actually? Will Sheridan had his car exploded two weeks ago. And now he is riding back out here after being attacked by El Mascara Negra. In style. I guess that's one way to make sure your car doesn't get exploded. You know, switch to a bike and ride it out to the ring. Good strategy if you ask me. And I hear that Will Sheridan is pissed. He's got something that he wants to get off of his chest, I imagine so. But it's more than just being attacked. It's it's something I've told that he's been dealing with for quite a while. And I don't know if the, the boys in the back are gonna like exactly what he has to say. Vindicator of Covenant Pro Wrestling, looking great in the Covenant Pro Wrestling Ladies World Championship. Forgive me and put your children away because this is a shoot. Put your kids away. See, Fuck them kids. Time and time again, I'm told that I am the problem with Covenant Pro Wrestling. I hear the whispers, whether it's the boys in the back, the fans in the crowd, or the neckbeard Cheeto fingered idiots on the internet, they tell me that I need to be removed. Like, that I am the issue. But I'm the guy who poured blood and sweat and tears and passion and energy and every ounce of money in my pocket into this company to get the wheels in motion, to get the gears moving. I gave you guys a place to watch when the other guys closed their door. I gave these guys a place to work when the other guys didn't want them. But I'm the enemy. The guy who not only competes in the ring, but also works backstage, works production, goes out into the community, tries to make the world a better place, tries to build business partnerships just to make this the biggest promotion on the face of the earth. I'm the problem. I'm the one that does it all, and you're the ones that watch. But the problem's me. Now you see, the problem the problem is people like Johnny D, who waltz in and think they're the shit. The problem is people like Jay Scott, who do the same damn thing while taking personal loans out of my pocket just to come here and entertain you while I do it for free. The problem is people like El Mascara Negra, who don't even have the audacity, don't even have the gall, don't even have the guts to see me face to face and man to man, the ones that have to attack me in the backstage area when I'm not paying attention. Well, I'm paying attention now, and I hope you are too, because if I'm the problem, if I'm the issue, then I might as well start acting like it. 
You see, I've tried to be the good guy. I've never once said in months that I was better because of what I did. I never had an ego and said I was great because of what I did. No, I gave the credit to you, but the credit goes to me. None of you can do what I do. None of you will do what I do. And none of you will ever have the footprint in this company or in this industry that I will. So if you want me to be a problem, you want me to be a problem, I'll be the problem. But first, allow me to invite El Mascara Negra out here to show him how problems really get solved. A huge statement by Will Sheridan. If you're still with us, we were supposed to be off the air minutes ago, but this is an unsanctioned beatdown, I guess you would say, an unsanctioned fight. Will Sheridan has told us um, that this is going to be a knockouts only. No pinfall. Referee Leonard Seymour is going to be in the matchup or, or in this fight, in the midst of this, this fight. And we see this masked man, the guy that exploded Will Sheridan's car accompanying um, El Mascara Negra out here. I don't know if he's going to be involved in this, but if he is, it's going to be all legal. And Will Sheridan doesn't look like he's backing down. It seems as though it's going to be two on one. Two on ones, two on one knockouts only. Leonard Seymour is there to just supervise the carnage. And right out of the gate, a, a vindicator from Covenant Pro Wrestling Champion. An elbow drop. El Mascara Negra able to avert a huge shot by Will Sheridan, but Will Sheridan able to avert whatever that was into an arm drag. And now it's time for the triple clothesline. Two of them down, one more to go. El Mascara Negra is down, but the Black Mask, this so-called mastermind, the assailant from last week who destroyed Will Sheridan's property. He says he wants to destroy Will Sheridan and eliminate the problem that is shared in similar to Jay Scott. Everyone is gunning for the top guy. Everyone's gunning for the boss. And right now the boss is looking pretty damn good against both of these people. But how much longer can this last as El, El Mascara Negra, the black mask, the, the apparent friend, of whoever this other individual is, is taking control of this. A dominator there. Will Sheridan is on the back foot here, but fighting back the will of our champion, the will of Will Sheridan, the will of our, you know, Covenant Pro Wrestling General Manager cannot be underestimated. But the, the mastermind showing why he is called that. The mastermind picking his spots and making his presence known. Will Sheridan. Will Sheridan is in bad shape. This has gone from being a potentially something that he could live through, something that he could deal with, to something I'm not sure that he's you know able to get out of without significant damage. He went for a dagger in there. And it's just being ragdolled around by Negra, being kicked by the Black Mask. And Will still battles back, able to hit the daggers in there. But Negra, even as the Mastermind is sent out to the outside, is now sending Will Sheridan outside. Went for another daggers and the tried and true maneuver he learned from his friend Gregory in the CWL. Working away on the legs of the massive luchador El Mascara Negra. 
using the environment to his advantage. Will Sheridan is doing everything that he can. Went for a clothesline or a haymaker there, but Negra is just too quick. Double underhooks there. And just slamming Sheridan on the barely padded concrete. Um, Negra just by a tire alone might have a slight advantage over Sheridan. Sheridan is wrestling and uh, you know his, his customary torn jeans but that jacket that he wears um, which he normally doesn't have on during a competitive contest may be even more restricting than the jeans. These two are picking their spots, double teaming. Barely padded concrete is the third man in this matchup right now. But Will Sheridan fighting back. But it's too many bodies in this fight, too much to keep an eye on. A brutal knee strike. Potentially busting Sheridan open, though it doesn't look like he was, but he's getting pretty damn close. And Sheridan fighting both men at the same time, slapping their heads together, bumping them together and trying to give them uh, a taste of their own medicine here. As he works on the legs of the mastermind. You know, Will Sheridan, the stakes are high here for him. Not only did the Mastermind damage his property, not only is the Mastermind behind this plot to eliminate him, not only is, you know, his pride as the Covenant Pro Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion on the line here, but his health, his very body is on the line here. Almasco Negra taking Will Sheridan outside. Will Sheridan, a brutal knee strike. You know, it's so impressive that he's been able to withstand this for so long. So many counters, so many, you know, errors, little holes that he's found in the offense of his, his, his opponents in this fight. But there we see the presence of a secondary opponent in this matchup. The will breaker potentially locked in. But it doesn't matter, there's no submissions, only knockouts count, only damaging your opponent to the point of, you know, unconsciousness is going to matter in this. I keep wanting to say it's a match, I keep wanting to say it's a contest, but this is a sheer fight. This is, you know, a, a, a battle, truly. And now Will Sheridan sent down But he battles back, went for something big there, but El Mascara Negra, the Tombstone pile driver. And now we've seen it before, the Crucifix powerbomb, Will Sheridan looks out. Will Sheridan looks unconscious, and, and if he wasn't before, he is now. Bye, knockout. El Mascara Negra and the Mastermind. El Mascara Negra and the Mastermind. Uh, some would call them Coronians. I'm not sure if that is their official name at this point, but I've seen the name flash across the screen when Will Sheridan's you know, property was damaged, when his car was damaged, now his body is damaged. These so-called Coronians are ushering us into a new era of Covenant Pro Wrestling and one that the chairman, the champion, Will Sheridan, might live to regret. That is all the time we have for you here tonight. Like, share, subscribe, and we will be back in two weeks for Hardcore Holiday.